Breaking news in two cases we've been following very closely here on the case. The stiletto killing in Texas. Ana Trujillo bludgeoned her boyfriend with a spiked heel shoe. A Houston jury found her guilty. And Marissa Duvois, the hammer killer out of Maricopa County, Arizona, after six days of deliberations, the verdict, guilty. The penalty phase in that trial set to begin in a little more than one hour from now. Marissa DeVault faces a second-degree murder charge for the January 14th attack on her husband. She thought she was earning $2 million from these insurance policies. Then she was charged with attempted self-defense. Then she was charged with attempted murder. Then she was charged with attempted murder. Police say she confessed to hitting her husband with a claw hammer while he slept. The defense told jurors a different story. Why would she take a hammer and hit him over the head? If there were guns in the house. The two were having marital problems. Telling jurors that he met the Mary Duvois at a strip club where she was working under the stage name of Reese Cup, and that the two almost immediately began, quote, dating. Was she married at the time you were dating her? Mm -hmm. It was Dubois' lover who was controlling her and manipulating the murder plot from behind the scenes. Prosecutors say that was a lie. We, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn in the above entitled action of Han Arnold's, do find the defendant as to count one first degree murder guilty, signed for person. And just like in the Jody Arias trial, this is a death penalty case. So now the question is will Marissa Duvois live? or die, that penalty phase will get underway in a little more than an hour. Joining me now from the courthouse, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor Monica Lindstrom. She's in Maricopa County, joining me on the phone. Uh, Monica, thanks so much. Let's begin here with the verdict itself. Six days this one took. Yeah, I was a little surprised that it took so long for them to decide the case. And usually when it takes a long time, us attorneys start thinking, oh, they must be going for the lesser included of second degree, but not in this case. They pulled through and they came back with a first degree uh, verdict, and now we switch over to the penalty phase, just like you said, just like we did in the Jody Arias case. So, Vinny, by the end of the year, we could have two more women on death row here in Arizona. Well, very possible, or is it? And here's my question to you, Monica. Uh, the difference between Jody Arias and, and Marissa Duvois at this point, the way I see them, is Duvois has three children. Does that play a factor, do you believe, inside the courtroom in the, in the penalty phase? Will Marissa Duvois use those children as a reason why the jury should spare her life? Well, I would think so. After all, remember, this jury, they're just regular people. They take emotion into account just like with the facts. So when they're determining whether to put her to death or to give her life, of course they're going to think about her three children. And she had better use that if she wants to try to save her life. Absolutely. All right, Monica, we're going to need you to get inside that courtroom so you can see what happens this afternoon. Monica, we'll check back in with you. Uh, at the courthouse in Maricopa County. Once that penalty phase gets going again, that's around 10.30 Pacific time. Thanks so much, Monica. And it took jurors in Houston just two hours to convict a woman who stabbed her boyfriend to death with a stiletto, and Christy Paul has more on that. Yeah, you remember Annie Trujillo, Anna? She showed zero emotion, none, as that verdict was read, claiming she acted in self-defense, remember? Prosecutors say, nope, she made it up. Well, Trujillo hit her boyfriend 25 times, look at that thing, with that blue shoes, five-inch stiletto heel. She could face life in prison, Benny. The sentencing process starts today, in fact. All right, we'll keep an eye on that.